Ladies and gentlemen, let's read GamingTed.com video. I'm going to be answering a question from someone on the Facebook wall, and they were asking me why Microsoft used DDR3 memory on the Xbox One. And I have somewhat given answers onto this before, not exactly uh, the purpose of the video, but mentioned it briefly in various comments and so on. And Microsoft themselves haven't actually answered on the question. But you can actually do some guesses and you can certainly put two and two together and get a reasonable example of why they would not have uh, gone with GDDR5. So the first thing we really have to do is to think about the price points between the two consoles. Now, there is a massive difference in pricing between DDR3 memory and GDDR5 memory. GDDR5 memory is typically what is used on high-end graphics cards, as we know. And the speed of the RAM combined with the bus type of the card and all components is what gives you the, you know, megabyte, uh, the gigabytes per second. So in other words, something like, for example, uh, GDDR5 on a 384-bit bus is going to have significantly more than, say, the 256-bit bus of the PlayStation 4. And this is why discrete GPUs, so in other words, proper graphics cards that you plug into your PC, have higher memory bandwidth than the PlayStation 4. They'll have, like, for example, over 200 uh, gigabytes per second, whereas the PlayStation 4 has 176. And this is all down to the fact that they've got a higher bus, generally. So, I won't go too much into that because I've already actually discussed this in a previous video. So, let's jump onto the actual question itself. Some of you may be familiar with the name Jonathan Blow, and he works on The Witness. And he revealed in a PlayStation 4 conference that The Witness actually uses 5 gigabytes of RAM. And so and so on Twitter, he gave a series of quotes. This was a while back, actually. This was in June uh, this year, of course, 2013, but still. And he said, and I quote, For those asking, 8 gigabytes seems like a lot if you're used to consoles with 512 megs. But it really isn't that much for, say, a modern PC. The witness wants to use over 5 gigabytes of RAM right now. And that is, by a small team, textures plus light maps plus audio, equals lots of bytes. More RAM means developers spend less time in the contortions to make the game run on the machine. More time making the actual game good. It's pretty amazing how cheap DDR3 is these days, even at retail. That RAM in the Xbox One must be super cheap in bulk. Kind of makes me wonder why they only uh, went with 8 gigabytes and 8 gigabytes isn't that much. The witness is 5 gigabytes so far, and it's an indie game. And that was his end quote. So it doesn't really tell you exactly what's going on, does it? He doesn't say, well, Microsoft selected it because of X. However, more could be revealed if you look at the PlayStation 4. Um, we know, for example, that at one point in the PlayStation 4's life, it actually had 4 gigs of RAM. This is we know this because everyone expected it to have 4 gigs when it was unveiled. Everyone. And what we basically thought uh, several months back is the following. Xbox One equals was going to have a large um, amount of extra RAM. Basically twice the amount of RAM, 4 gigs for the PlayStation 4 versus 8 of the Xbox One. But we thought that the PlayStation 4 was going to have much more memory bandwidth than the Xbox One. Notice how I'm leaving out the other components, uh, such as the GPU for a moment, just to simplify things. But of course, what eventually happened is Sony managed to cram much higher density DIMMs in there, and therefore, we got a situation where the PlayStation 4 has exactly the same amount of memory, and main system memory anyway, as the Xbox One. So, what basically happened, as the story goes from what we can tell from developers, what they've leaked from stories, from comments by Microsoft, and goodness knows what else. It was basically set in stone that the Xbox One needed 8 gigs of RAM from the beginning. And this can be seen by the way that they actually created the system. They created the system with the purpose of multitasking. Uh, we know that, for example, it has a multi-operating system environment. 
which is cool in theory, but it does take a hell of a lot of RAM. We know that about 3 gigabytes is system reserved, which is pretty similar to the PlayStation 4. We don't know if in, say, two years' time we're they're going to manage to claw back more memory, but regardless. Let's just go with the figures we've got now, because otherwise we'll be spending forever in a day trying to figure out exactly what it could be. So let's just assume that, you know, right now we're using the figures 5 gigs for games, 5 gigs for, uh, 3 gigs, I'm sorry, for... <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, for operating system functionality. Sorry guys, my voice is a little bit croaky. I've only just woken up. It's pretty early and I'm recording before work. So anyway, um, so we've entered a couple of if statements there. So the question is, how does this really fit together? Well, it's fairly simple. Uh, Microsoft decided early on that they wanted a multitasking monster. And the story goes basically that Microsoft weren't confident over GDDR5 and basically they made a series of gambles and they just said to themselves, you know what, we are going to be using um, DDR3 and we're going to offset that with a basically buffer, uh, which is of course the 32 megabytes of ES RAM, which is still a bit questionable actually why they've got the ES RAM how they have, but we'll talk about that in another video. And the purpose behind all of this is quite simple. They just wanted to make um, the system multimedia uh, machine. They wanted it to do lots of multitasking, to switch tons of applications, and goodness knows what else. And the PlayStation 4 wasn't built like that. They originally only assumed that they could have, say, 4 gigs of RAM, and then they managed to improve it on the final production. So what basically happened is Microsoft went with uh, 8 gigabytes of DDR3, and then they decided, you know what, this is obviously not going to give us enough bandwidth. It's only 68 gigabytes per second, which isn't enough uh, to feed the GCN cores of the Xbox One. Uh, although arguably, because it only has 12 GCN cores, despite the fact that they are operating a little bit of higher frequency than the PlayStation 4, it doesn't actually need so much memory bandwidth to feed them anyway. Because obviously less GCN cores equals less graphics computing power equals this memory bandwidth needed. This is exactly the same reason that, say, mid-range GPUs on a PC uh, require less memory bandwidth or have less memory bandwidth available than, let's say, a high-end GPU. So just throwing out numbers, it could be that the mid-end card has like 170 gigabytes per second and the high-end, so a mid-end card has 170 gigabytes per second, just throwing out numbers, and the high-end card has like, you know, 260. Just using arbitrary numbers there. So it's pretty simple. And then they realized, well, obviously that's not enough. Um, we obviously need to put the buffer in. And so that was put locally onto the APU of the Xbox One, the SOC. And then they decided, in addition to all of that, that that's not quite enough. And they decided to also put in the move engines, which we know what they are. I've already spoken about them before. You can check out previous videos. You could search move engines if you want. But effectively, they are just fixed function accelerators. So you could just think of them as basically um, hardware um, data accelerators. They basically move data around really, really fast. And they are fixed function, meaning that they don't ever receive instructions. They basically just do their thing and they do it autonomously the, the developers don't need to do anything with them they don't need to program them and this basically means that for the developers point of view that they don't need to even concern themselves that they're there they just kind of do their thing in the background and uh, they don't need to concern themselves there's a couple of benefits actually with the move engines predominantly that they free up both gp and cpu cycles um rather than the GPU, for example, moving data in terms of, say, compute, because, for example, on the PlayStation 3, uh, moving data around could sometimes be offloaded onto the SPUs, which, of course, are like the little mini processors on the PlayStation 3's cell. So what would happen is, in this case, you would find that, oh, okay, uh, the, you know, move engines are doing their thing, and it, well, lowers the performance uh, the performance hit, I suppose you could say, uh, moving data around. So that's basically why the PlayStation 4's APU 
is very different compared to the Xbox One's APU in terms of the extra cores, for example, the PlayStation 4 versus the Move engines and the ES RAM on the Xbox One. And the purpose of the question primarily is, of course, the DDR3 memory, which hopefully should answer the question. I'm just going to point this out. Obviously, Microsoft have not confirmed this, but it's a pretty good bet as to why they have uh, gone this route. And as for the next question, did they make a mistake? Very early to say. Many would argue that it's going to be a bit more complicated. And as I've said in other videos, I think it's really going to depend on how effective the, the buffer is that uh, 32 megabytes ESRAM. I think it's really going to come into things and really dictate just the performance of the system quite heavily. But it's very early to say yet. Yeah, I think it's going to take the NDAs basically fading away. So in other words, the NDA uh, period expires and then developers can come a lot cleaner and or maybe a developer decides to break nda but under a you know under sneakiness so perhaps post on some forums or whatever using uh you know some anim anonymity if i can pronounce the word and various other bits of bobs and maybe we'll get a, a feeling of what it is but right now it's really early to say so i guess we'll just have to kind of wait and see Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a fairly brief one for me, considering the gargantuan ones I've put out the last couple of days. But hopefully you've enjoyed it. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.